It is eight in the morning and I am strapping a fake radio to my waist in hopes that I can connect to my Bluetooth speaker. Wish me luck. Hello everyone. Today I'll be building a musically inspired gramophone outfit that acts like a real radio speaker. If you're new here, I make videos about fashioneering, combining my computer engineering background with fashion. Today's concept matches a bunch of decades together. I wanted something that evoked the vintage feel of soft jazz through a cathedral radio or an ornate gramophone. My plan is to have a corset piece that will go over a dress and it's gonna have dials and buttons that can actually connect to Bluetooth and adjust the volume. And then I'm gonna try working with EVA foam for the first time to make a big gramophone that just hangs out near my head for fun. Let's get started. Before building a whole costume, let's make sure the electronics are actually gonna work as planned. My plan is to use a programmable board called an ESP32. These usually cost less than 10 US dollars and they're awesome because they can connect to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth super easily. Then I'm gonna wire the board to connect to a circuit component called a potentiometer. I have a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer here and as you turn the knob, it'll vary the amount of resistance in your circuit. Then I can code the ESP32 to read the voltage on the other side of the potentiometer. So if the knob is turned all the way to one side, I read that low voltage and code my music to play at a low volume. And if it's turned the other way, then I know to play my music at a high volume. The code to do this is super simple thanks to a library called BLE Keyboard. You'll need to go download it from GitHub, I'll link it below, and it's also a little out of date, so you'll need to go look at the issues tab to grab the latest fix. After downloading this library, I only needed to write a couple lines of code in my Arduino IDE software, so you can pause it here to read. Once I upload this code to my board and connect my phone to the Bluetooth called ESP32, it works like magic. Now comes the hard part of translating a breadboard onto a moving human body. So it's time to brainstorm materials for the corset. I have this chunk of Warbler thermoplastic from a failed past project. So I thought this might be a good sturdy base to mount all of the electronics on. So I'm just gonna glue them directly to the kind of stiff thermoplastic. And then I'll do a layer of foam on top of everything to make it look pretty and to protect the electronics. With the base taken care of, I soldered long wires to my potentiometer, glued it down to the thermoplastic base, and designed a radio-shaped foam pattern to cover everything. I didn't really know what I was doing, so I tried this 4mm EVA foam for the corset base, and that was actually a perfect mix of sturdy and flexible. Then I primed and painted all the foam with this brown leather paint so that it could flex without cracking. At this point, it just looked like swirly foam, so I decided to 3D model a little dial plate. I'm not sure if that's the right word, and I painted that with a faux metallic finish and added a little paper volume indicator. Fun interjection, I learned at this point that you can very easily shape PLA 3D prints with a heat gun. So I just printed this part flat, then hit it with a heat gun for a few seconds and molded it to curve around my body. So cool. Next was my absolute favorite part. I dyed this cloth using coffee to use as the grill cloth, which added some fun texture. Finally, I glued in these ribbons to make a lace-up closure. So while we admire the glamour shots, let's talk gramophone. This thing was going to be huge, not a good candidate for 3D printing. So I started prototyping pattern pieces with construction paper and just taping together these big bell shapes. So here's my paper prototype of my gramophone. It came out enormous. I was picturing it to be this dainty little thing that sits on my shoulder, but instead it is smacking me in the face and obstructing my vision. So. It's kind of a look, but I think this means I need to go back to the drawing board and scale everything down just a little bit so that it can just sit on my shoulder and so that I can see when I'm wearing it. After two more paper model attempts, I got the perfect shape. To prepare for my first complicated shaped foam project, I went on a whole side quest to make this pair of foam bracers, and that's when I learned that you can punch grommets into foam. The more you know. Back to the main project. I cut the pieces out of 2mm foam and then decided to get fancy with laser etching some designs. 
On my test piece, you can see my first test, which was speed 1300, power 30, on my local Maker Labs Blowforge laser cutter. And then my second test was speed 1000, power 30, and that one just looked a little bit nicer and deeper. After priming everything, I glued it all together with contact cement, which is super toxic, so I did that outside and didn't film it. But if you decide to work with it, be sure to do so in a very well-ventilated area. Finally, it was time for the best part, spray painting it all gold. After spray painting, the gramophone looks so beautiful and metallic, but how the heck am I going to get this thing on me? And here's where I get stupid because I get overexcited about a new skill. At this point, I decide I'm going to learn how to cut and shape PVC pipes and make myself a little PVC pipe backpack that supports the head of the gramophone. I went on whole side quest purchasing a pipe cutter and trying to heat PVC safely before waking up one day and realizing I should just try out wire. It was lighter, cheaper, easier. So instead, I glued this three millimeter wire into the base of the gramophone and shaped a little backpack shape that will just go over my dress. And that was so easy. So now that I have a way to wear this bad boy, without further ado, let's take a look at the glamour shots. 